China isn't just copying SpaceX, it's rewriting the rulebook. While Musk's ocean platforms sit idle, Chinese rockets are now blasting off from the sea itself, turning ships into mobile launch pads. It's faster, safer, and surprisingly smarter than NASA's or SpaceX's land systems. But is this innovation or quiet preparation for something bigger? Let's dive right in. When Elon Musk bought two abandoned oil rigs in 2020, many thought he was joking. He wasn't. His plan was bold, to turn them into floating launch pads for the Starship program. The idea was simple but revolutionary. Rockets launching from the middle of the sea, far from populated areas, noise limits, or politics. In Musk's mind, the ocean was the next great frontier. But reality had other plans. Starship's development hit major roadblocks. Explosions, delays, endless redesigns. SpaceX needed every engineer focused on making the rocket itself fly, not on transforming oil rigs into sea platforms. By 2022, the dream was paused. The rigs, Phobos and Deimos, were quietly sold. SpaceX never said the idea failed. It just said, not yet. And while the world moved on, China took notice. Because what SpaceX shelved as too soon, Beijing saw as perfect timing. For decades, China launched its rockets from deep inland, deserts, valleys, mountains. Those sites were built in the Cold War era, chosen not for performance, but for security, safe from foreign threats. But that isolation came at a cost. When boosters fell, they often landed near villages, sometimes releasing toxic fuel. That was unsustainable. So in 2016, China opened Wenchang Spaceport on Hainan Island, its first coastal launch base. It was a turning point, but still limited. Launching from land meant navigating crowded airspace and managing debris risks. The next step was obvious, take the ocean itself. In 2019, China launched a Long March 11H rocket from a barge in the Yellow Sea. No fixed pad, no tower, just the open ocean and flawless execution. It was the beginning of something bigger, a maritime revolution in rocketry. And while the world viewed it as an experiment, Beijing was already drafting plans for a network of mobile sea platforms. These weren't symbolic gestures. They were part of a deliberate strategy to decentralize launch power, expand frequency, and outpace competitors who were still stuck to land. So why move launches to the sea? Because it solves almost every problem land launches create. From the ocean, China gains flexibility. Sea platforms can sail to any latitude, allowing rockets to enter any orbit, polar, equatorial, or custom, without depending on foreign airspace. That means fewer restrictions, faster turnaround, and cheaper logistics. It also ensures safety. When rockets fall, they fall into the ocean, not over farms or towns. For a nation as densely populated as China, that matters. It turns every launch into a zero-risk event for civilians, removing the one criticism that haunted their inland programs for decades. And most importantly, it grants control. Unlike U.S. companies that rely on public oversight, China's sea operations can occur in international waters, discreetly, beyond most monitoring systems. That's invaluable for testing new engines, defense payloads, or classified technologies. By combining civil, commercial, and military launches in one maritime system, Beijing gains flexibility that no other country currently matches. This isn't just an engineering shift. It's a strategic one. If a natural disaster or hostile action disables China's land bases, sea platforms can keep launching. Space access, once tied to geography, now becomes mobile and resilient. But China didn't stop with a few barges. They're now building something far more ambitious, the Eastern Aerospace Port in Shandong Province. It's not a single launch site, it's an ecosystem. Here, rockets can be built, tested, fueled, and rolled directly onto ships ready for sea launch. There's infrastructure for satellite integration, engine testing, and even command and control operations, all within one facility. It's vertical integration taken to the ocean. This structure means China can launch faster and cheaper, scaling missions at industrial speed. And it's not just government rockets anymore. Private firms like Landspace, 
galactic energy, and Orion space are now part of the ecosystem, backed by state funds but free to innovate. The result? A self-sustaining market that combines private efficiency with public power. A hybrid model that could redefine the global space economy. In short, while the West debates policy, China builds infrastructure. And that difference is visible in numbers. In 2019, China had one sea launch. By 2025, it's projected to exceed a dozen per year, not counting the ones nobody talks about. At first glance, sea launch might look like just another logistical innovation, but underneath it represents a shift in power. SpaceX built its dominance on reusable technology, a concept that took the world by storm. China is now taking that same principle and adding a new dimension, mobility. A rocket that can launch anywhere at any time without relying on a fixed pad creates a different kind of deterrence, one that's harder to track, harder to target, and impossible to shut down. Think of it this way. In a conflict scenario, land-based spaceports are stationary. Sea platforms aren't. They can vanish, reappear, and continue launching regardless of external threats. It's a move straight from China's long-term playbook, strategic unpredictability. This also opens economic doors. By mastering maritime launches, China can provide low-cost access to orbit for international customers, effectively creating a CX, a service model inspired by SpaceX, but unconstrained by U.S. regulations. For countries excluded from Western launch programs, China becomes the alternative. For private firms wanting fast or secret launches, it becomes the only option. And that's the real twist. China's space expansion isn't just about reaching the moon. It's about owning the pathway there. Now enters the hardware that could shift everything. Land Space's k 3 The rocket looks familiar for a reason. Stainless steel body, methane oxygen engines, grid fins, and landing legs. It's essentially China's answer to the Falcon 9, but designed with Starship-level materials. Standing 66 meters tall and weighing over 570 tons, it produces 750 tons of thrust from nine TQ-12A engines. Each booster can be reused up to 20 times. Its Block 2 upgrade will carry more than 20 tons to orbit, matching Falcon 9's payload performance. All before SpaceX's Starship even completes its first operational flight. The resemblance isn't coincidence. Elon Musk himself once said China had some of the smartest, hardest working people in the world. And he wasn't exaggerating. Land Space's engineers took inspiration from SpaceX, but didn't copy blindly. They iterated, streamlined, and localized the technology. While Musk fought regulations, they quietly built an entire manufacturing ecosystem optimized for speed. And when SpaceX hesitated to return to the ocean, Land Space went all in, combining reusability with sea mobility. That's what gives China an edge. It doesn't need to be first, just fast. Behind this technological race is a deeper story, one of policy and purpose. In 2015, Beijing officially opened the door to private investment in space. By 2024, it had already declared commercial space a national priority, backed by massive funding programs. And by 2025, it launched a trillion yuan investment fund for emerging technologies, with aerospace at its core. This financial firepower means Chinese startups don't just survive, they scale instantly. Factories rise in months, launch pads are built in ports, entire cities turn into aerospace clusters. Meanwhile, Western companies face a maze of regulations and lawsuits. In China, the message is simple, build, launch, repeat. It's this speed of execution that now threatens to tilt the balance of space dominance. Every successful launch adds to China's experience, data, and industrial momentum, while America debates budgets. And that's the quiet power shift Musk warned about years ago. If you don't move fast enough, someone else will. Sea Launch isn't an isolated project. It ties into a much larger national blueprint, one that fuses space, sea, and cyber into a single strategic network. China calls it the blue economy. It connects ocean-based logistics, satellite communications, and maritime security into one continuous ecosystem. 
That means every rocket launched from the sea is part of a bigger picture. Satellites for navigation and surveillance. Ships equipped for military or research dual use. Floating command centers capable of running both commercial and defense missions. SpaceX may dominate global headlines, but China is quietly building infrastructure supremacy. Something that lasts longer than hype. And the more we look, the more it becomes clear. The future of space might not be decided in orbit, but on the waves. Elon Musk and China share the same vision, expand beyond Earth's limits, but their approaches couldn't be more different. Musk bets on innovation and transparency, testing live, learning in public, failing fast. China bets on integration, combining government control with industrial speed and private ingenuity. Ironically, both paths may lead to the same destination, a multi-planetary civilization. But right now, only one of them is turning the ocean into its launch pad. And that brings us back full circle to the question that started it all. Why did SpaceX quit sea launch? And why is China doing it now? The answer may define not just who leads in space, but who controls the future of global power. And that's the key takeaway. China isn't just launching rockets from the sea. It's changing how the space race is fought. This is exactly why SpaceX's ocean platform idea still matters. Because mobility, speed, and adaptability are becoming the new currency of power in space. The message is clear. The next great leap in space exploration may not start from land, but from the waves. And as this new chapter unfolds, only those who keep watching closely will understand how it reshapes our future in orbit. If you found this video valuable, Hit like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to Space Hub for more real, in-depth breakdowns of the biggest shifts in space technology. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss what's coming next. This is Space Hub, where we turn today's breakthroughs into tomorrow's understanding. The ocean isn't the end of exploration. It's where the future of space truly begins.